welcome to episode 97 of our Family Travel Australia series. We've made it to the Red Centre, Australia's most iconic landscape and spiritual heart of the country, Uluru. We make the most of our time and enjoy a number of walks and experiences around Uluru and the spectacular Katajuta. It is not until you are standing in the midst of these giants that you get a true perspective for just how impressive they are. We camp off grid at the Ayers Rock Resort campground, spending our nights warming up by the campfire. Plus, we enjoy the Field of Light experience, a beautiful art installation in the desert, an outback cinema like no other, and we take in all the beauty of sunset over the rock while we cook up a delicious damper on the Weber. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. Crisp morning in the Alice. Okay, we have got an exciting week or so ahead of us. Yeah, we sure do. So what's what's the plan? We are heading from here to Kings Canyon mm -hmm. and Uluru, mm -hmm. and we'll be coming back to Alice Springs to actually cover the park and, and get a bit more uh, detail around the Alice. So, but something very exciting we said was coming. Who are we meeting up with, Jasper? We're meeting up with the Merediths! <laughs> the Merediths, that's yes. right. Adam and Nick and their two boys, Jai and Noah. This is the family that basically saved our little bacons down in Tassie during COVID round one last year. Uh, we ended up in their driveway for over four months. Mm -hmm. uh, basically complete strangers that are now amazing friends. During that process, they homeschooled their boys. Yep. Didn't think that they could do that. Mm -hmm. Ended up buying a van, mm -hmm. <laughs> upgrading their four-wheel drive. Yep, they're like, this is your fault. <laughs> you did this. <laughs> it, it's quite an amazing story, you know. And and so they have long service leave and the boys are, are doing some homeschooling. They have been from Tasmania to the Cape. Mm -hmm. And now we have intersected them here in the Alice to spend this next week with these incredible people and uh, it's a, I think a good opportunity for us to give a bit of give back as well. Oh yes, yeah. we owe you guys still <laughs> forever. <laughs> so I'm sure that we will uh, have some amazing times together yes. but we will definitely uh, share, share some of our experience as it happens with the Merediths, yeah. right Jasper? Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty excited, aren't you? You got a couple of mates to travel with yeah. again. <laughs> uh, and then we will obviously try and make our way back to Darwin with the world and COVID and everything else depending. So mm -hmm. we will just do what we need to do to yep. stay safe and happy and well. Let the next leg of the adventure begin. So good. Here we go, Kings Canyon. Woohoo! Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What are you guys doing? We're going to Kings Canyon! Woohoo! Hang on, I'll... Jasper wants to say hello. There you go. Hey, buddy! Hey! Hey, Jasper! Hey, guys! 
Introducing the Meredith. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll follow you. Let's see. Let's just begin. his name is. Look up here, boy. $2 a litre, you can fill up in the centre of the centre of Australia. Okay, this is a bit of an interesting one. Uh, I don't know if this is an omen, but catching up with our good um, friends from Tassie who took us in during COVID round one. Looks like now we're stranded with them in our version of COVID round two. Actually a little place called Mount Ebenezer, I think, or Ebenezer. Um, it's an actual roadhouse that's completely closed up. Looks pretty derelict. Uh, on our way to Kings Canyon and Uluru, uh, but They've just uh, announced that they're closing down Alice Springs in a couple of hours. So now we're just trying to find out if that's going to be the same as it sort of filters down through the rest of the state down here to Uluru, Kings Canyon, where we're meant to be going now. Uh, yeah, and what we kind of do, it's a three day lockdown. So it's, you know, it's all fine. We've got enough uh, supplies for probably a couple of weeks actually, but not ideal anyway update to follow it's an uneasy feeling isn't it this COVID it's an uneasy uh, knot in your belly that you get when you when you're not sure what the best decision is so anyway we will get back to it and make a, a plan just a, a quick toilet stop for Jasper here we'll be on the road in a sec Okay, a uh, quick COVID update for our travel plans. Um, and just to make a point here, we're actually June 30th at the moment. It's just gone 1.30 p.m. We're about 80 kilometers out from Uluru. And uh, we decided to bypass Kings Canyon and get straight out to Uluru because Alice Springs up towards uh, Darwin is all closed. Uh, and in a three-day lockdown. Uluru has let it be known that they are open for business. Obviously, you can't get into the state, you can't get out of the state, as is the case in many states. Yeah. So uh, we will try and pull up stumps there over the next three days while the rest of the state and um, much of the country is in lockdown. Uh, that way it allowed us to still be able to spend time with our, our traveling Tasmanian family and hopefully uh, allow us all to share an experience with the rock in the background. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. It's, um, it's interesting being so remote. Yeah. And how that feels when places and states are locking down again. We are in the middle of Australia. <laughs> and you 
couldn't really get too much further away from services and all sorts of stuff. So there's these two sides of the coin. Yeah. One is, wow, don't you feel safe? We're nowhere near Any anyone or anyone. anyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. gee, I feel a little bit anxious because we're not near anyone or anything. Yeah. It's, it's interesting too right. because we're with our Tasmanian family again and we went through this with them at the very oh, start sort of, of COVID. Yeah. It's really bizarre. So we're blaming them <laughs> and they're blaming us. We've stopped talking on the radio because we're having a little <laughs> reprieve from each other, I think. Uh, no, look, we've got enough supplies and fuel and we just, um, yeah, we're full fuel, full water. Yeah. Obviously got enough power with the solar and inverter. And yeah, got some firewood. We've got plenty of firewood. Marshmallows. <laughs> yes. We have some wine. We do. All right, but uh, on a serious note on this side of what's going on around Australia and, and certainly further afield is just we hope that you and your family are safe and well and look after each other and yeah. we'll stay keep, positive yeah we'll keep going and yeah stay positive and here we go the rock all the road Don't you love it? We cannot believe we are actually here. <laughs> Feeling very fortunate. Okay, it's a pretty easy six hour drive, a fully bitumened road. That equated to about 443 kilometers from Alice Springs to the campground here in Yulara. And I tell you what, when you're driving and all the roof first comes into view, it is truly spectacular. It almost doesn't look real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's definitely one of those wow moments. Yeah. So we headed straight to the Ayers Rock Resort campground. Now we are staying in the overflow area because all of the sites within the campground itself were fully booked, but this is fantastic. It's $30 a night 
per van. You don't have power or water hookups, but you do have access to all of the campground's amenities, the facilities, including the pool. And they've even installed some toilets here in this massive overflow area as well. Do you know what's incredible is that you feel like you're driving forever and you'll barely pass anyone and then you get here <laughs> and it is so buzzing with tourism. I mean, there would be, I don't know, 500, 600 campers here in different vans, RVs, buses, tents. It's really incredibly well set up. There is so much accommodation option here there is something literally for every type of traveller. Yeah, you're right, Paul. There are the hotels, there are apartment style accommodation as well. There's also the town square village, which has some fantastic facilities, including a supermarket. There's a post office, a bank, a couple of restaurants and cafe. There's a beautiful lawn area within that town square section plus there is police station a fire station and a health center as well they also operate quite a large tourism and information center in the town square as far as tours go there is more to choose from than you could possibly fit in mm -hmm. uh, depending on how you want to see the rock whether that's by camel <laughs> by four-wheel drive by four-wheel drive bus by helicopter fixed wing plane, on foot, uh, Segway, bicycle. <laughs> you can literally choose your own adventure on how to take in this epic landmark. Yes, and then of course they've got so many different experiences that you can book into as well and a lot of free activities that they offer in the resort. Yeah, it's fantastic. The other thing too is that if you're not traveling by vehicle, there is an airport and I mean, we checked last week. I think the flights from Brisbane to Uluru were $89 each way. Mm -hmm. And now is definitely the time to come. The temperature is perfect. We're enjoying a balmy 23 degrees today. It does drop and get quite cool mm -hmm. overnight, but that also adds to it. And I have to say there are way less flies than what I was anticipating out here. <laughs> Do you know what's really fantastic about the overflow is that compared to the powered sites where everyone is literally jammed in beside each other and in some cases I think it would be difficult to even put your awning out, you can spread out here, you can have your own fire which we plan on doing tonight mm -hmm. and that way you are really getting to enjoy the space and the environment without feeling like you're really packed in. Yep, that's right. And it also feels very safe as well. Definitely feels safe. There are a number of patrols that go around each night. Uh, so look, I mean, you should always lock your van, obviously, but we haven't worried about those other things like, you know, your kids' bikes or the weather or worrying about those sort of things, which um, in some of these remote areas you do have to consider. Yeah. Getting up this morning nice and early, I think it was around about 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to get ourselves out of here by 7 for that sunrise over Uluru was spectacular. Yeah, it was, and it's one that we even dragged Jasper out of bed because we didn't want him to miss it either. Those colours, once that sun peaked over the horizon, were just beautiful. What's really fantastic is that the National Park Pass is, in our opinion, incredibly affordable for families to experience. Yeah, that's right. So you can get a three day pass. It's $30 per adult. We actually purchased an annual pass because, well, we've fallen in love with it and we wanted to get as much time in that national park while we're here. And who knows, we might be back within the, within the year, but that is $50 per adult. Kids under 17 are free. Okay, if there is anywhere <laughs> that you know or that you've been certainly not in our experience so far where kids are still regarded as 17 we'd love to know about it um, that is really fantastic and it does make it so affordable for families to actually all enjoy this experience together mm -hmm. 
Now there are a number of different walks that you can do around Uluru, including the base walk that is a 10.6 kilometer loop. Mm -hmm. We actually opted to do a couple of the shorter walks with Jasper in tow, mm -hmm. and we feel that you still have the opportunity to experience the best aspects of this rock. Yeah, it is fantastic how they've broken up the base walk into different sections so that if you do have a little one in tow, you're not doing that whole 10 kilometres. What we did enabled us to see the water holes that fill up after the rains and provide that essential source of water to the wildlife of the area. We also got to experience some incredible indigenous artworks on the rock and within caves, which was just amazing. Being able to get up this close to Uluru, you can really understand why this is such a culturally significant place for the Aboriginal people for thousands and thousands of years. It is truly a moving experience. Yeah, it is. And there are sections of the trail that you can literally get up close and touch and feel the rock. And Hi, Jasper loved that putting his little face up against the rock and listening and taught and introducing himself <laughs> to the beautiful. rock and listening for what it would say back to him. It was quite a spiritual experience and there's there's only been a few places that we've traveled to date that have a real feel about it and mm. it's quite hard to put into words what that is but it is a very moving and very spiritual and you can feel that here. Yeah you definitely can. I think that it doesn't matter whether you are 10 kilometers back checking out the sunset or sunrise or you are right up and actually hands on the rock every aspect of it is different mm. but all of it collectively is definitely worth the trip and worth the time to spend a few days to really immerse yourself mm. in this incredible environment yeah that's so true Paul Another part of this experience not to be missed is a visit to the cultural mm, centre. Yes. Uh, you're going to need at least three hours and really take your time to hear the history, watch the vision, read all of the incredible interp, mm. visit the art gallery and see some of the local artists work and yeah. storytelling and there's also a cafe on site as well but well worth your time. Yeah, definitely. And also make sure you catch that famous sunset. We headed out, we cooked up a cheeky damper while we were out there, took a cheese platter and a glass of wine and sat and again just watched the changing colours of the rock and the nighttime sky. So definitely one to do while you're out here. I think a really good tip, Katie, is to arrive at least two and a half hours before mm. the sun actually is due to set yeah. and drive right down to the other end of the car park don't just pull in and park anywhere it's yes. completely clear down that end and a little less people as well in that location and that would be our best tip mm -hmm. okay so tomorrow 
very excited. We are heading out to Katajuta, the Olgas. And in fact, we have heard from a number of other campers that this is potentially even more spectacular than Uluru. Oh, look, it looks incredible. Even from here at the campground, it's another 50 kilometers further west towards the WA border. Mm -hmm. It stands almost 200 meters taller than Uluru. It is certainly a lot wider and more spread out and it looks incredible. How amazing is this country? Incredible. Awesome is this. So we've made it to Uluru. We've actually pulled up at the sunset viewing area. We've got a platter that we're about to pull out. We have a glass of wine and we're going to make one of our favorite recipes, which is super easy a lemon myrtle damper. But I'm going to do a little twist on it this afternoon and add some macadamia nuts as well. What's awesome about this is you don't need a lot of ingredients, seriously. Two cups of self raising flour, a pinch of salt, 60 grams of butter half of your favorite beer, whatever you drink. That's it, you can do this anywhere. So let's get started. Isn't that amazing? Let's hope the damper is too. All right, we're gonna pop it in the Weber that has been heating on high for 10 minutes. We've turned it down to half heat. Pop it on, check it in about half an hour, 30 to 40 minutes. I really just go by what it looks like. You can pop a knife in and if your knife comes out clean, you're ready to go. I had one job to bring the trivet. <laughs> Instead, I have found some this is Outback style cooking at its best. Some air rocks. Look at that, perfect. You need to trim it. Thank you, Uluru. That is delicious, wifey. You've done it again.
just to get you just to hold that side for me while I get that first one up. As everyone knows, Katie loves command hooks. <laughs> and this, this is her best use of a command hook in this van to date. Oh, thanks, Del. I think it is so clever. Like, simple. <laughs> Who else loves command hooks? It can't just be me. No, no, it's good. I'm paying credit where it's due. Look at that. Freaking awesome. picture-perfect day it is here yep. out stunning. in the red center it is absolutely stunning okay we've uh, only got about 15 kilometers more to go we're heading to whereabouts Jasper we're heading to Captain Victor. great Captain pronunciation Victor. yes aka the Olgas uh, actually we read that the indigenous meaning is many heads yeah, when which you, is perfect. Yeah, you're driving along, you're looking out here from this perspective, it looks like many hats. So, yeah, well done on that. Really incredible. There's a couple of different walks here that I think we'll tackle this morning. There is a the Valley of the Winds full circuit, which is seven and a half kilometer circuit. I don't think we'll do that one, but we might do the Walper Gorge walk and we might do one section of the Valley of the Winds as well. Yeah, I think they're both family or grey nomad friendly as well, yeah. so we're told they're only a couple of kilometres each um, return and yeah. so you could, you know, stroll in and out fairly easily in about an hour for each one, so we'll tackle both of those. Yeah, we've got our, our Tasmanian family in <laughs> front of us today, so we get to do that together, which is, I just love this. There's nothing better than sharing experiences like this with the people that you love spot on yeah yeah that's what makes this adventure oh it makes me get a bit emotional makes the memories <laughs> last a lifetime all right are we ready to do this jasper yeah all right bye Let's, bye, bye. bye. Feel goods and the Meredith. Look at it. Here we go, baby. Let me figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Okay, 
Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Do you want to lay the first stone? Yeah, that's a good one. Pick it up. Hard. They have to be hard. <laughs> yes, rocks have to be hard to be a really good fire circle. All right, get that first one down. Rock. Great. Rock. Good start. Rock. Yeah, getting better. <laughs> Rock. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com.au. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails.
Isn't that amazing? All right, let's hope the, the damper is too. <laughs> Looks beautiful, doesn't it, huh? A little bit of uh, damper with your butter there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How has your night been, Jasper? <laughs> well, for someone who speaks a lot, you're a man of few words tonight. Uh -huh. Why's that? Maybe because you're shoving your face with macadamias? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so serious. Are you tired? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. can tell. <laughs> Look at this. Amazing, mate. A bit fresh, but amazing. Real men, <laughs> real men watch sunrises. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there it is. All a room. This way. Oh, thank you, tour guide. <laughs> Little does he know we've got another nine and a half kilometres to go. <laughs> I heard something say hello back. That's how you do it. These are rocks from Katajuda. And this is a beautiful lookout. And watch what they can do. Hopefully there's no one sitting down there, huh? <laughs> this has always been a quiet place for the Aboriginal people. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> Hi. Amazing. Hi. Are you enjoying it? Yep. You're doing an excellent job as yeah, our tour yeah. guide. Uh, I might keep touring back. Yeah. yeah you yes, might please. have a little snack on the way back. Yeah, snack is good. Snack. Um. Yeah. <laughs>